Hey, Zoom is a little weird tonight. Hello, everybody. Hello, my dear Cancerian friends. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have your November 2022 horoscope right here, as well as my latest book, Take Back Your Money, is now available on Amazon and my website, MaxineTaylor.com. The birth chart tells us what our programming is, but doesn't can't tell us how to release it and let it go. This little book will take you step by step through every everything you need in very simple fashion to let go of your programming and create it the way you want it to be. Um, it's really that simple. Um, also, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one session with me on uh, Take Back Your Money, just go to my website and look under the Spiritual Coaching tab, and you'll find all the information you need. We do a three-hour session in which I carry you through the entire book, and you don't need the book. You'll have me, and I will address your personal issues with you. So I look forward to it. So let's talk about your wonderful forecast for November. First of all, let's look at the sun and Venus and Mercury. The sun is the yellow planet and it is the giver of life. Wherever it is, it lights up that area literally lights it up. It's been in the fifth house of children and uh, fun and games that include sports, that includes symphonies, that includes uh, watching TV, uh, exercising, whatever enjoyment is to you. So you've been able to play and that's terrific. Venus, the planet of love and money, has been in that fifth house too, and it's still there for a little while. And wherever Venus is, that is what we love. So you, this is socializing, fifth house is fun. So you may have met somebody, or you might've just been having a blast going from party to party, or your children may have been a joy to be with. Any of those, whatever you love to do, whatever is fun, and what you have created, your, your child or your children. And Mercury, the blue planet, it deals with what we think about and talk about. So you've been thinking about fun. You've been thinking about your children, and they have been thinking about themselves and talking about themselves, and they're just adorable now with that Venus and the sun. Um, even if they're 45 years old, they're just adorable. Okay, what happens is that the sun, Venus, and Mercury are going to move into the sixth house of work, health, and service. The, uh, um, Venus will start. Venus moves into the sixth house. Your health improves. Your job improves. Uh, that's on the 16th. On the 17th, Mercury says, wait for me, I'm right behind you. And so Mercury moves into your sixth house and that's what you're thinking about and talking about and uh, just chatting about. Um, if you have employees, you'll be focused on them. And then on the 22nd, the sun, the giver of life moves into that sixth house and it is activated just beautifully. And you'll be able, if you want to create uh, better health, if you want to create a new job, there you go. Now, Jupiter, the great benefic, is in your ninth house. And what this says is um, your mind expands when Jupiter is in your ninth house. Wherever Jupiter is, it expands it. Jupiter rules money. Jupiter rules truth. Jupiter rules long distance communication and transportation, but it has been retrograde, which means it's not expressing itself fully 
um, on the 23rd of the month, it goes direct. It comes out of retrograde. And so uh, things are going to be picking up then. It will move into the shadow of the retrograde, but it will have an opportunity to express fully once it comes out of um, retrograde on the 23rd. Super. All right. Now, Mars in the 12th house, the red planet. 12th house is behind the scenes activities. It's the subconscious. It's the spirit world. Mars is anger. Mars is passion. Wherever Mars is, that's what you fight with and fight for. But it's hidden. It's hidden on the subconscious level. And so you may be irritated. You might be depressed if you if you take anger and turned it inward, that manifests as depression, of course. Um, but there's behind the scenes activity, whether it's emotional, mental, or physical, and it will stay behind the scenes until Mars, the planet of action, moves forward, which it will in January. Um, this is very frustrating, I know, because you want to get things moving. And when Mars is retrograde, no matter where it falls in your chart, everything flatlines. Nothing happens. That's been frustrating. Okay, well, let's see what we got going on with the full moon and the new moon. On the full moon, which is um, November 8th, same day as the election, midterms, all bets are off because when it's a total lunar eclipse. And on the full moon, things come to a head. Um, this falls in your 11th house of friends and groups. Um, and you'll want to uh, communicate with them, perhaps. Uh, but group projects come to a head. Remember, this affects everybody on the planet. And in your chart, your solar chart, it deals with friends, group activities, and humanitarian projects. Okay, that's the full moon. Then the moon starts waning. And we have a new moon. Uh, oh, by the way, the full moon, the lunar eclipse, is in 16 Taurus. Find that in your birth chart. And it will tell you where this is going to pop. Okay. The new moon um, is when the energy of the moon starts growing again. Because on the full moon, the energy pops and then it wanes until uh, we're in the dark of the moon two days before the new moon. On the new moon, uh, which is uh, November 23rd, and it's in one degree, 38 minutes of Sag, um, that's when your work, your health, your, your daily activities start moving forward. So we've got Jupiter going direct on the 23rd and Mars um, still, you know, retro. I think once it goes forward, what, the world will start moving forward again. Because remember, it's not just you. You're not alone. It's everybody. So that's November and I look forward to seeing you again in December when once again, we take a look at your forecast. Until then, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.